So protons, neutrons, and electrons are collectively called subatomic particles. Sub meaning below, atom meaning atom. They are smaller than the atom. They're the particles, the main particles that make up atoms. There are other particles in there, but chemists don't generally care about them, so we don't talk about them. We do need to ha know some things about protons and neutrons. So protons and neutrons have very similar masses. For our purposes, they're the same. Electrons have almost negligible mass. They're so small, it just doesn't really matter. Um, the atomic mass unit is the unit that was created to measure the size of atoms and the particles inside of them. Because a gram is way too big. Even a nanogram is far too small, far too big. So the atomic mass unit has the very creative abbreviation, AMU. Um, it's defined as one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons. So essentially, six protons and six neutrons add up to be 12 atomic mass units. So you don't need to worry about the exact definition of that. If you're interested in that, I'd be happy to explain it to you. What it comes down to, though, is the mass of a proton in atomic mass units is really, really close to one atomic mass unit. The mass of a neutron is really close to one atomic mass unit. The mass of the electron is about 1,800 times smaller. And so for most intents and purposes, it's zero. Most of the time, it doesn't matter. So the mass of a neutron and a proton are both approximately one, and the electron is approximately zero. These are their actual masses in kilograms. And you see these are very, very tiny numbers, 10 to the minus 27. The charges, um, these are relative charges. You could measure the charge in coulombs, but we don't need to. We just need the relative charge. So the proton has a positive one charge. The neutron has no charge. It's neutral. And the electron has a negative one charge. Protons and neutrons are inside the nucleus. Electrons are outside the nucleus. Those are the things that you need to know about subatomic particles. Comparing the size of protons and electrons. So if the proton um, had, the so had the mass of a baseball, an electron would be about the mass of a rice grain. So electrons compared to protons and to neutrons are, are very small. The proton's nearly 2,000 times larger in mass. So if, if atoms are mostly empty space, why does matter seem so solid, right? If you bang your head on the cupboard door, it feels pretty solid, right? You try to you punch the wall in anger and you break your hand. Dumb, but people do it anyway. That wall is pretty solid. How can matter be so solid if it's mostly empty space? Well, that's because the variation in density between that really, really dense nucleus and the empty space around it that is on such a small dimension that we can't distinguish it. So it's a little bit like looking at a giant scaffolding. So scaffolding is made up, it's, it's, this looks more like a jungle gym, an old-fashioned jungle gym to me, but you've got these metal bars and they're making this framework, but inside is mostly empty space, right? But if we back up and view this from, say, a blimp hovering over, or maybe, you know, we don't even need a blimp. We could use um, a drone. That's the word. We could use a drone to take a picture of this, watch it on video. You, you get away from this, and it's going to look like it's solid. You get real close, and you see it's mostly empty space. So matter appears solid because the difference between the very solid parts and the very empty parts is so tiny that we can't discern it. We have to have a basic understanding of what electrical charge is. So electrical charge is a fundamental property of protons and electrons. 
Protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge. They don't lose that or gain it or anything, they just always have that. It's just how they are. Electrical charge uh, um, has many of the same or is similar in many ways to magnetic fields. Um, and so we've probably played with magnets a lot more than we've played with electrical charges. Um, but just like magnets, opposite charges attract each other and like charges repel each other. You can go home and grab two magnets off the refrigerator and if you put them together one way, they want to stick together. And if you turn one around and try to put them the other way, they repel each other and it's really hard to put them together. That's what positive and negative electrical charges do. So positives will be attracted, um, and positive and negative. Different charges will be attracted to each other, and like charges will repel each other. If you have a positive one charge and a negative one charge, and you put them together, overall then, that has zero charge. 